honoured guests, fellow councillors, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very different Civic Awards evening. It's good to see you all, albeit virtually. But this is still a very special occasion for us, and probably one of the most significant ones that we have in the year. What I'd like to do is at the start mention that we have, I think, two uh, of freedom of the City Award winners here. One of them is the former Dean of Chichester, Nicholas Franey. I can't see him at the screen, but is he there, David? Uh, shall I go? No. Great. I know he hasn't been too well, but uh, he's there. And the other one is uh, Dave Tilly, <coughs> representing the Royal Sussex Regiment Association and the Queen's Regimental Association. Thank you. Sadly, COVID-19 regulations has meant that our customary gathering will be regarded as illegal uh, activity. As this remotely held ceremony is a first in the history of this, I will be visiting all the recipients. Personally, in my robes, to make a formal but safe and socially distant presentation to you all. And we will have a commemorative photograph taken together. Then, when the time is right, we will all gather together in the assembly room for a reception. In the company with the past civic award winners too. The Chichester City Council Civic and Heritage Awards have been presented since 1986. Since 2000, as were the past. In 2018, two new awards were created, namely a community award, and a building of places of oh, well, 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 well. interest awards. It. It's really nice. Tonight we present civic awards and community awards. Civic awards are presented to people who need not necessarily be residents in the city, but have contributed their services to the well-being of the city. They receive a special medallion and lapel pin. This shows one side the historic coat of arms of the city, and on the other side that the historic and enduring symbol of the city, the Market Cross, erected by Bishop Storey in 1501. The name of the recipient and the year of the award is engraved on the medallion. We shall also be presenting the community award certificates to a number of organisations who have played a significant and valuable part in the city, particularly at a time when communities have never needed more to be strong. How impressed I've been with the work of so many local people during my two terms of office as Mayor of Chichester. So we will move to the Civic Awards. But first, can I ask all those who wish to, to join in prayer from the Reverend Canon David Nason. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I invite you to just reflect for a moment and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for your continued blessing upon our city of Chichester. All who live here and all who work in this place. We remember those who serve our city through the local councils, both as councillors and as employees. And we also remember those who keep us safe through the emergency services. Tonight, we give you special thanks for those who give their time, their talents, and their resources to the many charities that we have to assist people who are less fortunate than ourselves and to aid those in distress. We thank you too for those who thank seek you. to enhance the cultural life of Chichester for our enjoyment and for our pleasure. We remember those who have served the city in the past and are now at rest, especially those who have held this civic award. And particularly at this time of pandemic, we remember those whose lives have been affected by the current COVID virus. And as we remember them, we also give thanks for all frontline workers, those who care for the sick and for those in isolation those who constantly work to make and keep our city safe. These prayers and petitions we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. I now call upon the town clerk to actually take us through the proceedings. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. And following up Chris's point, just to introduce myself, I'm, I'm Rodney Dugua. I'm, I'm the town clerk of the city council. I'm a fairly new kid on the block in, in this sort of uh, line of work, so you'll have to excuse me um, appropriately. Could I just make a, a general administrative announcement if you're not familiar with this type of proceedings, because it's all very different tonight. In your little uh, photographic box, there's a little button that says mute. If you press that and your microphone goes red, in the nicest possible way, that cuts out all the background noise of, you know, DIY or someone uh, doing their karaoke or, or, or what uh, might be going on. But we'll now move on to the uh, Civic Awards. And it's, it's our usual practice to introduce the recipients in alphabetical order. And our first Civic Award winner tonight is Vincent Gray, and Vincent's citation will be read by Councillor Anne Sicona. Mr Mayor, fellow councillors, honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to present to you Vincent Gray. Vincent has become well known in Chichester, having contributed several sculptures and public art to the life of the city. He's gained valuable experience in various parts of the world. Born in Cheam, he then spent his early life in Australia. However, the majority of his education was gained both here in the UK and in Sweden, and marrying Rita, his Swedish wife. In 1988, Vincent won the Edward Lawrence Prize for Sculpture, and in 2000 applied and was accepted to the Royal Society of British Sculptors. By 1992, he was working in England as technical assistant and project leader to Philip Jackson. And in 2002, he set up his own Vincent Gray studio at Chilgrove. And several of us have visited the studio and been greatly impressed with the work that he produces. He spent 10 years lecturing in art and design at Highbury College in Portsmouth. He has taught and lectured in sculpture and design in Sweden and here at Chichester University, Chichester Art Society, West Dean College and now also private tutoring. Mr Mayor, the list of Vincent's work is extensive and covers both Sweden and all over our, our own country. Therefore, I'll mention just a few of his sculpturing achievements in public view, many of which we will have seen for ourselves and maybe not even realized that Vincent was the artist. He created a maquette and a sculpture of our queen for Sandhurst. And he has several in the making, including Vera Lynn for Ditchling, Sir Alec Rose for Portsmouth, Virginia Woolf for Rodmel and the Charlton Brothers for London. He's also created a maquette of Captain Sir, John, Sir Tom Moore walk, walking for the NHS, which was displayed recently in our cathedral. He took part in 14 years of the Gallery Trail and seven years of Chichester festivities, while more recently he's taken part in all eight festivals of Chichester. Apart from exhibitions further afield, he's exhibited at Pallant House Gallery, the Minerva Theatre, the Oxmart Oxmarket Centre of Arts, and in the garden of Cloisters Cafe over several years, as well as in the cathedral itself. Many of us will have seen the figure of Leonard Bernstein in one of the courtyards of St Richard's Hospital. And this was brought out to the cathedral during the 2019 for the, Bern, for the Bernstein Festival, <coughs> Vincent did that one. At Fishbourne, near to the children's playground at the Fishbourne Centre, there's a poignant memorial, <coughs> excuse me, a poignant memorial to Lucy and Becky, teenage sisters killed in an accident. And at Selsey, there's the lovely Lapwing sculpture. Vincent created the bust of St. Patrick Moore, which just watched was displayed in Waterstones a few years ago 
to raise funds for equipment for our planetarium. And he's also raised funds for our central school. Very many people will know the touching sculpture of Royal Sussex soldier Morris Patton, who was killed during World War I, and which Vincent gifted to the city to stand in the Little Moor Memorial, standing at reverse arms. Vincent's figure of John Keats at Eastgate has drawn many tourists to sit next to the poet and be photographed in Chichester. And still to come, at present, residing in the council house, is the sculptor of Horatio Nelson and Admiral Sir George Murray, waiting for its installation in North Street, hopefully in a couple of months' time. Vincent is unselfish in his contributions to the life of our city, teaching, advising, giving talks and taking part, as well as making short films on his work. Mr Mayor, I commend Vincent Gray for a civic award. Vincent, would you like to say a few words for us? Uh, certainly. Hello, Richard. And thank you very much for that uh, introduction, Anne. Um, obviously, I, I couldn't have achieved anything without the help of many other people. And if it's appropriate, I would just like to mention some of the individuals and organisations that have helped me along the way and supported the cause. Chichester Councils, of course, have been part of this throughout. The District Council, the Murray Club, Chichester Bid, Architect Peter Robson, Millwin Foundry, Rotary, Carluccio's Restaurant, all those that have donated to the various projects, Ox Market Gallery, Chichester Cathedral, Traditional Stone, Chichester Library, and of course my family, all of whom have helped me with my various projects along the way. So thank you to them, and thank you for this honour being bestowed on me. Well, thank you very much, Vincent, and very well deserved. And I look forward to coming and giving your um, civic award in person to you uh, on Friday. I look forward to it. Thank you. I think we now go back to the town clerk. Yes, thank you. I'm, I just meant to say to everyone, if, if there's a slightly longer pause between me um, reading out the recipients, it's because of a technical issue on any editing we're going to make of this recording. So th th thanks very much, Mr. Mayor. And next award winner is uh, Jimmy Upton. And uh, a form, sorry, a past Civic Award winner, Mark Hillman, is going to uh, read out Jimmy's citation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Lady Mayoress, City Councillors, former Community Award holders, ladies and gentlemen. I've been asked to introduce the nomination for PC Jimmy Upton for a Chichester City Civic Award. Now, we all know him as Jimmy, PC Jimmy Upton, and he served as a City Centre Constable in Chichester for over 24 years. His name is really Kingsley. That's his real name. Jimmy came from his warrant number, which is CU200. And in the police, we all have nicknames. So CU Jimmy turned into his name, and we all know him as Jimmy. So 24 years is a very significant time in the modern police force to be in a community policing role in one city. Normally, People either go for promotion or get moved out into different roles. But Jimmy was able to keep his role. And that's especially in the light of all the changes, cuts to the police service that have been made during that time. Over this time, he maintained, developed and progressed the city centre radio network that works with retail and licensed premises within the city and has been a great boon to sorting out a lot of the problems. This has resulted in him having a consistently high work and arrest rate, and he frequently topped the figures for the most arrests per year in the whole of the County of Sussex. 
This work led to a real sense of unity with staff in the linked premises working together for the safety of the city. This in both the daytime and the nighttime economies. The inception of the Chichester uh, Chibak, Chichester Business Against Crime within the city, has been led a lot by his input, and that brought together even closer the police and the businesses in the city with exceptional results. As part of his role, he had a significant input into projects dealing with rough sleeping and homelessness in the district and wider force area. The people in Brighton were very interested in the way we operate in Chichester. As part of his role, he had, sorry, Jimmy carried out his duties firmly and with good humour and is respected by all those he came into contact with. And indeed, at one stage, there was a Facebook page dedicated to people who'd been arrested by him. Some of the comments probably couldn't be repeated. He assisted with the setup and training and liaison with the church-led City Angels organisation and he's been the face of the police within the City Council as well as District Council in various departments that he dealt with there. So despite the cuts to the police force, Jimmy maintained these city centre contacts and in the last couple of years he was put into a unit that uh, meant he, he was allocated to other areas. But uh, strangely enough, he always seemed to manage to get back to Chichester and, uh, and look after us. His retirement recently will leave a vacuum in the visible presence of the police on the streets of this city. Although I did read recently that uh, someone may be replaced, be put into the city centre. And he has been a real servant to the community. And personally, having worked with him, I found him to be a very genial companion in all sorts of situations. And I commend him for this award. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ron. Uh, I don't think Jimmy is with us tonight, but I'd just like to say that um, I also nominated uh, Jimmy Upton uh, for a civic award. Um, he has been really uh, one of those people who have made an enormous contribution to Chichester. Um, he is there. Everybody knows Jimmy Upton. Uh, everybody knows the work that he does. Um, and he's been there for many years. And I think it's an old fashion, if you like, policing, in that he knew his community, he worked with his community, and was a, a terrific man. And I always enjoyed talking with Jimmy. He always knew what was going on. Uh, he was a he was very, very good in his job. So well deserved uh, civic award. And I'll be going to present his award again on Friday. So thank you very much for that. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Well, thank thank you, Mr. Mayor. Our third recipient tonight is David Sparrow. And if you've attended one of these events before, you'll see we did a first tonight in that we've had some former award winners read out the citations. There's another change tonight because um, due to the indisposition of uh, the person who was reading out David Sparrow's citation, David, it's fallen to me. Um, so just to let you know, don't worry about mentioning anything about a certain sports centre earlier, it, it, it's all safe. But let's, let's tell everyone about you, because David Sparrow has been a major trustee and steward of what is known as the Old Deers Trust for over 20 years, responsible for the welfare and maintenance of the almshouses at Riverside, toes away. Recently, he was also a key member of the team overseeing the construction of four more almshouses. The Deers Trust is supported by the Corporation of St Pancras, which is known in Chichester as the Wheelbarrow Club, which was established in 1689. David has the principal role of what is known as the recorder in that organisation. He's also been mayor and the proposer of the nomination, who happens to be one councillor Richard Plowman, has written the word mayor in inverted commas. And as an alderman, he is the main organiser of the Wheelbarrow Club, many events, including their annual dinner, which is now 
over 334 years old. And David, if I could say to the mayor, Mr. Mayor, that is your citation, which I've read out. I wonder perhaps, as you know, David, a long, long time, if you would like to add anything. Yes, I, I would. I think the, the thing, David, is actually uh, a stalwart as far as the uh, Deers Trust is concerned. Um, not only is he a trustee, but he's the, the man who looks after or has looked after the people there. He's been down there doing the maintenance. He's the one that's looked after it, made sure that uh, everything's worked down there. So he's put in an enormous amount of effort over the time. And um, I think he's been very much part of the past. Um, I, of course, also known uh, as uh, part of the, oh, well, I am now an alderman of the Corporation of St. Pancras. And, and David is very, um, very peculiar, or particular, I should say, in terms of referring it to the Corporation of St. Pancras. He said the Wheelbarrow Club only came about really in sort of uh, uh, Victorian times. So um, it is the Corporation of St. Pancras, and I know he's been extremely uh, proud to do that, and has organized many of the events. And as I said, we, we now are the oldest established continuous um, uh, dining club in the UK. So uh, the Corporation of St. Pancras is one of the last remaining orange clubs uh, in, in the country. So um, David, you put in an enormous amount of work. Um, you really deserve this award. So well done. Thank you. David, would you like to say a few words? Would well, indeed. Mr. Mayor, thank you and the Council for honouring me with this award. Um, I'm not sure if I am supposed to say this, but I also believe that Tony French had a hand in recommending me to your house. He did. He did. Um, I would have liked to have thanked him. Unfortunately, Tony is now with the great corporation in the sky. No doubt organising things there as he did down on earth. Anne and I have been uh, lived in Chichester for nearly 50 years and we have involved ourselves with much that this splendid city has to offer. But never did I think that I would be put forward for such an award as this. May I thank you very much indeed. Thank you, David, and thank you for mentioning <coughs> Tony French, <coughs> someone many of us has known for many years, and Tony will be pleased. He, he, he couldn't let the opportunity go by without me just mentioning it. Of the two nominations, his one came in first. So, <laughs> so now, so now uh, we move on um, to Tim Schofield, and uh, Tim's citation is going to be read by... Councillor Clare Mr Mayor, past civic award holders, fellow councillors, ladies and gentlemen. The Reverend Canon Tim Schofield has been an exceptional presenter, a member of the Dean and Chapter at our magnificent cathedral. He also extended his spiritual services to become the Mayor's chaplain and his guidance and advice were much appreciated. He has also been very much involved with the community. As presenter, he is responsible for creating services and selecting the hymns and music. Of particular note, forgive the pun, was the special cathedral evensong service for the Guild Hall at the conclusion of Priory Park's 100th anniversary celebrations. Evensong in the Guild Hall transported us back to when it was the Greyfriars Chapel it was the very first time in the history of Priory Park such a service had been held. The choir and the music chosen by Tim Schofield made the experience very special indeed. Similarly, the special even song on the anniversary of the death of our Chichester hero, Admiral Sir George Murray, Nelson's captain of the fleet and close friend. The appropriate choice of music with a strong nautical basis made the evening memorable. The same magic was there for the hundred years of the Rotary Club of Chichester's Evensong. Amongst his duties are for the welfare of the Dean and Chapter, and there have been some challenges over the years, 
but he has remained a constant support and pillar throughout his 14 year before retiring. Tim's work at the cathedral has been fulfilling, interesting and varied. He recounts one unusual service when there was the celebration of the 75th anniversary of the guide dogs for the blind. Everything was going well until one of the hundred dogs in the cathedral barked and then all hell broke loose. He also was instrumental in the Sunday children's ministry also developed and the Cathedral Pebbles group, which was formed, which goes from strength to strength. Tim says this is in, almost entirely due to his wife, Julie, who has always shared in ministry to children wherever they have been and her team of young parents. Tim has been part of the Chichester delegation on the visits to uh, on the last three Coburg conferences. In the wake of Brexit, he felt these European partnerships have never been more important. So Mr. Mayor, I too have much pleasure in putting forward the Reverend Canon Tim Schofield for a civic award. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done. Tim, would you like to say a few words? Thank you very much, Richard. Thank you so much for this civic award, which I feel both humbled and honoured to receive. One of the important roles I believe that the cathedral community has is to work for the flourishing of the city and its people. And it's been a real privilege over the last 14 years to work in some small way with mayors, city councillors, and officers to try and build up our local community and enrich it to all. And I, I look back with particular pleasure and gratitude of all my collaborations. Um, but as Claire mentioned, I, I have particular fondness for the even song in the Guild Hall in Priory Park. Uh, so thank you again so much for the award, which means a great deal to me. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, as I say, I'll be coming around to uh, this evening in person. Um, and I just want to say personally, Tim, um, thank you so much for all you've done and a well-deserved civic award. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mann. Our, our next recipient is David Mason, and Councillor Anne Sakuna will read the citation. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, fellow councillors, honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to present to you the Reverend Canon David Nason. David, your, your chaplain, Mr. Mayor, came to Chichester in 1989 as priest vicar in the cathedral and chaplain to the Prebendal School. Being initially appointed for three years, and a con this is the contract which was extended twice. As the minor canon in the cathedral, his job was to arrange and sing the services and pastoral care with the congregation. At school, he arranged assemblies and taught Latin and religious studies, and also preparing the students for confirmation. David was then appointed as deputy head of the school and head of classics. Every year, he organized walking holidays during the summer break and at Easter for students and their parents, often to the capital cities of Europe. Mr. Mayor, I well remember some years ago, and I think it was a mayoral function, when we listened to David's Prebendal Students Concert Orchestra, Bits and Pieces, in the Deanery Garden. David took this orchestra to Speaker's House for an after-dinner concert for Baroness Boothroyd, who was then the speaker. But David hasn't only been concerned with Cathedral and Prebendal. Since 1994, he's been chaplain to 461 Squadron Royal Air Force Cadets in Chichester and is now chaplain for the whole of London and the South East Region Royal Air Force Cadets for which he received a letter of appreciation from the Ministry of Defence for his 25 years of service in that role. David ser served as chaplain to Mrs Denise Patterson while she was High Sheriff of West Sussex. And when Canon John Hester retired from the role, David became chaplain to the Festival Theatre. And as well as all this, he served several mayors, including yourself, as mayor's chaplain. 
He's a governor of Bourne Community College and gives talks locally on opera and musical evenings. I remember a most interesting evening some years ago on Ivor Novello, where he, he sang the parts as well as, as well as told us about the life of the, of the wonderful actor. He recently gave a most interesting talk on Fre French opera composers to the Friends of Chartres, on which he's also a committee member and a fluent French speaker. David hasn't retired, and I suspect he's unlikely to, as on most Sundays he takes service in local churches, covering for clergy who are away for whatever reason. Mr Mayor, I warmly recommend David Nason for this Civic Award. Well, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Schooner. Um, I just wanted to say that, uh, as I know, that uh, David is my chaplain, and the role of a chaplain is a very important one, and uh, David is excellent in giving advice and helping and we talking over things. So there's a lot more to the um, mayor's chaplain than meets the eye. And I must admit, I couldn't wish for a better one than uh, uh, councillor, sorry, uh, David uh, Nason. So um, David, would you like to say a few words? Thank you. Yes, please, Mr. Mayor, I would. Mr. Mayor, city councillors, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for the honor of this civic award, which I can assure you I greatly appreciate. Just after I arrived in Chichester in 1989, initially, as you heard, just for three years, a wily, aged female member of the congregation looked me up and down closely and said, welcome to Chichester. But you know, you can't call yourself a Cicestrian until you've been here at least 30 years. At that time, it seemed to be a very unlikely prospect. Well, that landmark has been passed and I have no desire to live anywhere else. I feel so privileged to live here in a city with so much to offer. Our history, our culture, our theatre, our cathedral and so much more. You notice that I am now using a possessive pronoun, our, because 30 plus years on, and now the holder of a city council civic award I feel well able to call myself a Cicestrian at last and to be mighty proud of it. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you, David. And now our final Civic Award recipient tonight is Rachel Osborne. And Rachel's citation is being read by past Civic Award winner, Graham Pound. Mayor, City Councillors, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It gives me great pleasure, personally, to have been invited to read the citation for Rachel Osborne. We have known Rachel for almost 20 years, meeting her shortly after we joined the Twinning Association. It was at the inaugural meeting to set up the Friends of the Letter in 2009, that with her inimitable spontaneity, that she volunteered to be the membership secretary. One thing led to another, and Rachel has been one of the members instrumental for the great success of this friendship. She has played a key role in this association, not only as the secretary, but also as joint editor of Melita, the member's newsletter. She wholeheartedly backed the Three Cities Twinning event in support of the Festival of Chichester. In Rachel's vocabulary, there is no such word as no. Rachel moved to Chichester 55 years ago, living in Cathedral Close. She helped with the catering when the festivities started in 1975, and later she joined the Shopwick Singers, where she regularly sings on a Tuesday. She was chairman of the local branch of the Church of England Children's Society and organized Christingle services in the cathedral and helped with the box opening children's parties at the Bishop's Palace. For over 20 years, Rachel has been working with the team selling Christmas cards for the Good Causes charity. Since 2001, she has become heavily involved with the canal, 
organizing the school's education trips, and volunteering both on the boat and also in the shop. Mr. Mayor, it is for her many contributions to the city that she thoroughly deserves the Civic Award for 2020. Uh, thank you very much, Graham. Thank you. Uh, I must admit that um, Rachel is one of those people that wherever I go in Tickleton, whatever function, uh, Rachel is always there doing things. And uh, Rachel, it's been an enormous contribution you've made and uh, you very well deserve this Civic Award. So uh, I think, would you like to just say a few words? Yes, thank you. Mr. Mayor, councillors, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honoured to receive this award and I thank Graham for his citation. I must say that I would not have become so involved with so many things had it not been for the encouragement and support of that Tony French. <laughs> and of course, as Graham says, I'm just a girl who can't say no. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well done. <laughs> Rachel, thank you. Thank you very much. We now move on to our second category, ladies and gentlemen, uh, community awards. This is a comparatively new category, um, which is given for um, the rather obvious um, uh, um, category mm -hmm. of service to our community. And of course, as many of you will know, the beating heart of Chichester rests with so many voluntary organisations. Our first award is to the Chichester Youth Adventure Trust, and the citation will be read mm. by Councillor Claire April. And I have turned my mute off. Um, Mr Mayor, fellow councillors, on guests, ladies and gentlemen. The Chichester Youth Adventure Trust was formed in 1984 as the Chichester Mayor's Charity, and the Mayor at that time was Councillor Antiglina. The purpose was to set up a centre in wild country where young people from the Chichester area could spend a few days away from home, learning to work together, and also to experience a different environment from their normal one. It would also serve to accommodate Duke of Edinburgh's awards, skiing, expeditions at gold level, and to house school field trips, learning botany, ecology, and many other subjects. An old wood woodman's cottage in the Brecon National Park in South Wales, three quarters of a mile up a mountain, and set in one and a quarter acres of land, was purchased and renovated. The funds were raised from various activities through the year, and every youth club, school, college, and young people's organisation in Chichester raised fun what funds they could, from £60 raised cleaning cars to £2,000 for a sponsored silence in one of the schools. Set up as a charitable trust in February 1984, is still run by a volunteer group of dedicated people experienced in working with teenagers. A local caretaker in South Wales liaises with the local workmen who may be engaged to undertake tasks and ensure that it is in clean and nice for the groups to arrive and checks they leave in similar condition. The trustees themselves go there several weekends each year to do work, checking the track, painting inside, and liaising with the local sheep farmer who is very helpful and friendly. The centre sleeps 29 people and has all facilities, including essential heating and its own spring water, which is checked by the local environmental health officer a couple of times each year. At first, groups of young people went there for weekends, spending their mornings helping to renovate the place, learning skills in building, gardening, dry stone wall erection, etc., and their afternoons doing adventurous activities such as rock climbing, caving, canoeing, hill walking, mountain biking, pony trekking, and lots of other things. Many undertake marvellous walks along the trail of seven great waterfalls. 37 years later, and literally thousands of our young people have benefited from this facility, which now has a three-star rating as a bunkhouse, the highest rating available for this type of accommodation. Schools, scouts, free service groups, team building groups, Duke of Edinburgh's award scheme, youth clubs, probationary groups, as well as leader training weekends. 
it is in especially high demand for weekends and school holidays. New Year is one of the most popular times as no celebration noise disturbs the neighbours, all of which are sheep. So I think this really deserves the, the award that has been put up for it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, thank you very much, Councillor Bailey. I don't know whether anybody wants to uh, speak uh, from the uh, from the Youth Adventure Trust. Does anybody just want to say a few words, or do we move on? Yes, yes, Mr. Mayor, I could say just a couple of words. Um, as my thunder has been stolen uh, because I think uh, that uh, Claire must have seen my script, or someone else must have seen my script, because it is. Uh, my script is virtually the same as as uh, the one that's just been uh, uh, given to you. But to reiterate um, the, the fact that the charity was founded some 37 years ago, and it is really solely at that time due to the efforts of Anne Cicluna, who founded this charity uh, for the benefit of, of young people. And as has been said, uh, it was seen uh, and saw that young people should be engaged in outdoor adventurous activities um, for their personal social uh, education and that it was a good way of developing work skills to enable them to take their place in society as mature adults in a changing world. Um, and as has been said, uh, well, what hasn't been said is we've been told that the place is in uh, in South Wales and it's a, a place called Tyne Morglug, but you may wonder why it's in South Wales and not on the South Downs. Uh, but the reality is that the South Downs is really not an adventurous enough environment to do the adventurous activities that Anne, in her wisdom, thought that they should uh, punish their bodies with and, their, and the leaders that took them. So uh, the area that the bunkhouse is situated in is in the southern part of the Brecon Beacons, the National Park, beautiful area. And for any of you that uh, have been to that area, you'll know that it is certainly a wild place with caves and crags um, and hills and, and rivers and gorges. Um, which will test uh, any young person's um, resolve when they're involved in activities there. Um, I don't know how many thousand people have uh, been there, but it is thousands and thousands. Uh, and many of those people um, have now um, become involved with the, with the trust um, and have returned to the trust as volunteers, leading groups, Others have helped on work party visits and in an advisory capacity, and a special few um, have even become trust trustees. Um, so to say that Anne's ambitions have now been recognised, and for her and the many volunteers who have made this possible, it is a mission uh, accomplished. Um, as to the future, uh, Tal Morgug, the bunkhouse, still has a place to play because its legacy for the young people of Chichester uh, will be that the Trust has a project to plant an area of their land for carbon capture, recreational activity and environmental improvement as a positive initiative towards saving the planet. And finally, to reiterate again, None of this could have happened, A, without Anne, and secondly, without the dedication and efforts of the so many uh, volunteers uh, that have, have uh, contributed to making the place uh, what it is now. So thank you very much uh, for this nomination. And um, I, can I pass on my, my thanks from the trustees uh, as well? Thank you. Okay, and thank you very much for that. And I'd just like to say thank you. I know that many, many uh, people have actually uh, enjoyed their experience and it's actually been very worthwhile for them, particularly at a time when uh, they're trying to find their way in the world and to give them that sort of adventure, um, to get them to make them more independent and to learn about is a, is a very worthwhile activity. So 
Uh, well done, 37 years, it's not bad going. And let's hope you go for the next 37 years. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you. John, thank you very much indeed. Um, our next community award goes to the Chichester Child Contact Centre and the nomination will be read by Councillor Sarah Sharp. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr Mayor, fellow councillors, former award holders, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present to you Chichester Child Contact Centre. This centre might be something that you may have lived in Chichester for many years and never come across or you maybe never heard about. But for some families, this centre is a true lifeline and helps families through troubling and difficult times. The contact centre was set up in 1996 and provides a safe place for children whose parents are no longer living together to meet with professional support and supervision. It meets on alternate Saturdays and has continued to meet almost without any breaks, except for a short one due to the first lockdown since 1996. Indeed, in the local area, while other nearby centres have closed, our Chichester Centre is continuing to operate now, although under strict COVID secure rules, the way it functions is a little bit different. The centre is child led and centred. After relationship breakdowns, which can be traumatic situations for all concerned, the centre provides a safe space in which to start to make reconnections between the child and the non-resident parent. The centre is blessed with the expertise and commitment of a large group of volunteers who ensure that all sessions are run safely. Most of the volunteers have worked or work in education or health fields and have relevant experience of the issues involved. This group is relied upon by the courts and the police and families are referred by many agencies, including the Family Centre and the Citizens Advice Bureau. It isn't funded or run by local councils, statutory bodies, or by national government. It's a voluntary group, and yet it is an essential service for people when relationships are tense and tempers frayed. It provides a safe space where it's usually the dads, especially, can make a fresh start and reconnect with their children. And in normal times, they can learn from the other fathers and benefit from each other's experience and mutual support. When I originally thought of this award, we actually only had the category for individuals. Anne Wales, who I knew volunteered at the group, was adamant that it was the whole team, the whole group that needed recognition for their service to Chichester. So I'm really pleased to say that now we have this relatively new category to nominate the group. Kathleen has undoubtedly been a great leader, sorting out all the necessary backup work, liaising with the courts and judges and the police. But it is the whole team that we recognise this evening for having turned around the lives of many families, for having eased and soothed relationships and having absorbed pent up anger. Kathleen told me she was proud of the fact that in all the time she had worked at the centre, none of the uh, parents had ever used bad language in her presence. This group turns anger around and facilitates new starts in families' lives. So Mr Mayor, I commend to you the Chichester Child Contact Centre for a community award. Thank you much, Councillor Stephen. And what wonderful work they're doing and very necessary in these days. So uh, I wondered if there was anybody from the Chichester Child Contact Centre who'd like to say a few words. Yes, please. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, Mr Mayor, councillors, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all our volunteers and our volunteer trustees, 
thank you for honouring us with this presentation of the Community Award. The restrictions imposed by the current pandemic has brought into sharp focus how deprived we all feel without face-to-face -face contact with our family, especially young children. So you can imagine the joy expressed by children who meet their father, or increasingly their mother, after months of absence. I haven't written this down, but it struck me that Safa gave us a thousand pounds because we'd helped so many service families just after the Iraq war and Afghanistan, and already even now, because soldiers, servicemen move away, families break up, and we're helping them still. For 25 years, our volunteers have enabled children to meet their non-resident parents and wider family. We have grandparents who come as well. The children miss out so much by not having half their family's love. The volunteers support these families, prioritising the safety, the emotional health, and the physical well-being of each child for as long as it's needed and that's at no charge or extra charge however long that child needs they can stay so thank you for this most appreciated recognition of our work it should be uh, either thanking you for all the wonderful work you've done so thank you very much for that thank you thank you very much indeed and uh, our final community award recipient tonight is the Chichester Area Talking News and the citation will be read by Councillor Debbie Carter. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Mr Mayor, fellow councillors, honourable guests and <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen. I would just like to quickly say that um, Anne Sukluna very kindly wrote this for me. Um, I think she asked me to do it because as a councillor, I'm also partially sighted. So you'll just have to bear with me, even with modern technology. It's not always easy, but I will give it my best go. <clears throat> now, for over 40 years old, Chichester area talking news was found <clears throat> was founded by Elaine Bowden. Sorry, Elaine Brown, to bring news oh, and, and items of interest to people with poor eyesight and a large band, a large band of volunteers. Produces a fortnightly news program and a quarterly magazine, all spoken by local readers, a team of producers in rotation, each fortnight purchase <clears throat> the three local observers and pick out the interesting items of news. The, the plan the programme and choose which readers are chosen for the <clears throat> for the <clears throat> for their good speaking voices read each item and another team plans the quarterly magazine thinking of items which will interest listeners and asking local people to tell their, their experiences or share their knowledge. All this is recorded in a small studio situated near the entrance of St Richard's Hospital. <clears throat> it is copied around 500 times and sent out to listeners free of charge by the Royal Mail. Listeners are supplied with a equipment which to play the news and the magazine on and are visited by helpers to ensure that they are happy and to sort out any problems. 
a very happy annual dinner is held for the listeners, including a few guide dogs, which sit quietly underneath the tables, probably hoping, but not always, for a little uh, treat. <laughs> this is a life-enhancing experience for a large number of local people with sight problems. All the workers and the committee are dedicated volunteers, many of whom have served for many, many years and some of whom have lost their own sight. During the pandemic, Chichester Area Talking News has managed to keep most of its services going, often recording in their own homes and keeping in contact with the listeners, many of the whom have been isolated during the lockdown. Where it has, been, has not been possible to send out a programme, the listeners have been telephoned by the volunteers to ensure that they are all well and have someone to talk to. It is interesting that this is such a wonderful organisation, as well as the founder, Elaine Brown herself. Five committee members have themselves been recipients of the Chichester Civic Awards. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Carter. And not easy, so well done. Thank you very much. Um, I just, uh, before I ask somebody from the uh, Talking News to speak, I'd just like to uh, say that um, uh, I had a wonderful um, sort of experience. Uh, the AGM that the Talking News uh, run is exceptionally good. And I remember I was uh, giving a little talk up front there, and there were three ladies in the front row there who uh, unfortunately uh, couldn't see at all. Um, and uh, at a later point, at another meeting, I saw the same three ladies sitting there, and I went over and I said, hello. And uh, one of the ladies said, uh, I hope you don't mind being, me being a little rude, she said, but we're waiting for the mayor to come, and he's a very nice man, you know. <laughs> 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 so uh, anyway, I'd like to perhaps ask somebody from the, the, the wonderful organisation and Chichester Air Talking News to perhaps talk to us. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Um, can I reply on behalf of Chichester Air Talking News? Um, Mr. Mayor, councillors, ladies and gentlemen, um, can I thank particularly uh, Councillor Debbie Carter? I was very, very touched that you, with your disability, um, felt that you wanted to um, make this um, uh, presentation. Also very, very grateful to Anne Shikluna, who is such a great supporter of the organization, and also to you, uh, Mr. Mayor, because I know you're a very enthusiastic supporter of the work that we do. So I'd be very happy indeed to accept this on behalf of our fantastic team of volunteers. We're all volunteers. We don't have any paid staff. And we have 300 plus blind and partially sighted listeners. Both categories are represented here tonight. John Holloway here is a very, very professional head of production. Um, John, can you give everyone a wave? And, uh, and then you've already met Chris. Uh, he was here with his wife, uh, Chris, also Chris, and their lovely guide dog, Kenny, who you I think saw so just now. Um, Chris and Chris are trustees, as is John Holloway. It's a fantastic organization. We have 300 plus listeners who are either blind or partially sighted. And also it's not limited to people who are blind and partially sighted because anyone can listen to our service, which is completely free um, over the airwaves. You just go on to our website, and you can listen to the programs and you can listen to it on Zoom and all sorts of other marvelous contraptions. 
it provides a very, very important service to a lot of blind and partially sighted people and people with other disabilities across the whole area. And as you'll appreciate, many of these people are feeling very lonely, isolated and vulnerable at the moment. So throughout the pandemic, we've managed to keep going by broadcasting our programmes, although we haven't been able all the time to record and send them out on memory sticks as we normally do. We're hoping to start that again as soon as we possibly can. But it's a highly valued service. It's been going, as you've said, for 46 years now, since 1975, doing a tremendous amount of work, uh, which is highly valued by everyone. The listeners tell us regularly how much it means to them, how much they look forward on a Saturday morning to hearing that yellow envelope plop through the letterbox um, containing the memory stick with our recorded programs on. And four times a year, we record a news, a particular magazine, a news magazine that goes out in a red um, wallet. And again, people say that's tremendously important to them and they look forward enormously to it. So thank you very much indeed um, for this award. It means a great deal to us. It's a very hard working organization and it's marvelous to have recognition in this way. It'll be a great boost to all our volunteers. Thank you very much indeed. Highly appreciated. Thank, thank you very much. much. And, and thank you, Dick. And can I just say that um, I know we all appreciate the amount of work and effort you put into the organization itself. So thank you very much for all that you do. Thank you. Right, I think um, that actually brings all the presentations to uh, an end. And so it just uh, remains for me to really congratulate you all. I think we've heard some, some wonderful <coughs> speeches today uh, about some excellent organizations and people that are making a wonderful contribution to Chichester. So my congratulations to all those Civic Award winners and all the Community Award winners uh, is very well done. And all of them, as you heard, very well deserved. So thank you for that. I just also like to say thank you uh, to the officers and particularly to Gareth Bowen here because um, getting something like this together uh, and get, making it all work is no mean feat. So I'd like to thank you particularly Gareth for all the work you've done behind us and for it to go in as well. Um, the good thing about Zoom is that uh, there are a couple of things here. So you don't have to wear a mask while we're having it, which is uh, uh, very helpful. And the other thing that I don't have to say, safe journey home. So thank you much. I think it's been a very special evening. I'm, I'm, I'm actually moved by uh, the presentations and the awards that are being given. So thank you very much. And of course, uh, we'll all get together with a very special um, evening for all the Civic Award winners, including yourselves, where we can celebrate properly uh, together, um, which I'm really looking forward to. So thank you once again. And as I say, um, at least you don't have to go very far to go home. Thank you.